There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life sea. Hello again. We are here uh, answering questions on the Bible, basic Bible questions. Uh, right now we're in the second part of the question, what is the difference between the payment for sin and forgiveness of sin? First we uh, gave you what the payment for sin really is, what is required by God the Father. Now we will get to the forgiveness of sin. Uh, forgiveness is uh, a Greek word, aphies. Uh, it denotes a dismissal or a release from something. It is from the verb afiemi, to send forth or to send away. At the moment, the very moment, a person believes that Jesus Christ is the anointed Savior from God, that person is saved from eternal condemnation. John chapter 3 verse 18, He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He said to be born again, John chapter 3 verse 7, uh, the theolo theological term uh, for born again is regeneration. He is born into the family of God. 1 John 3, uh, 1 and 2, talking about the person who believes instantly he is uh, born into the family of God. Uh, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Beloved, now we are children of God. He, that person who believes instantly, is adopted by God as an adult son. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Adopted as adult sons because in the Roman culture an adult son was the only one that could inherit. So we are adopted instantly as adult sons into the family of God. There are many, many more things that God does for and to the believer the moment he believes the information. Just believe the information. Jesus Christ is the anointed Savior. None of them, none of these things that are done to the believer can be seen or felt by the believer or even appreciated in time here on earth until the believer learns about them by studying Bible doctrine. One of the things, one of the other things, is forgiveness of sins. That's our question. This is forgiveness of any and all sins committed up to the moment of salvation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 <clears throat> this is only available to believers because the purpose of it is for fellowship with God, your adopted Father. That is only available to those who are in the family, those who have been adopted. Every believer is put into union with Christ at the moment of salvation and can never get out of that union. John chapter 10, verses, uh, verse 28. That union is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So until you receive your resurrection body, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. However, the Holy Spirit will not force His control over the believer's life. Your relationship as an adopted son of God is eternal. You can't do anything about that. You are eternally 
an adopted son of God, eternally saved. However, your fellowship with God is very temporal. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And I just read that. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 also. Uh, both of those verses speak of believers, not unbelievers, but of believers using their free will to hinder the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So believers do hinder the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Sin in your life does that. We believers are all sinners just like unbelievers. 1 John 1.8 tells us, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we are sinners just like unbelievers. We will remain sinners until we receive our resurrection bodies. The Father, of course, knew this in eternity past, and He provided a remedy for that called forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, I was in a Bible class the other night, and we had a, quite a discussion about this particular verse. What does that include? What is confession? Uh, how do you go about doing that? So, confession, the Greek word is homologia, and it means speak the same thing. It's, a, it's from the verb homologeo, and this is a compound verb. Uh, the first part of it, the prefix is homos, which means same, and lego, which means I speak. So it is, means I speak the same thing. So what you're basically doing when you confess a sin is that you're telling God, I did this and I know it's a sin. That's all the Father requires. I did this and I know it's a sin. Confess silently to the Father, not to anybody else, Confess silently to the Father. Tell Him what you thought. Thoughts can be sins. Tell Him what you thought or what you did and that you agree with Him that it was a sin. It doesn't hurt to feel bad about doing it. It doesn't hurt to feel bad about committing the sin. However, if you think that feeling bad about doing the sin is part of the way the Father forgives you, forget it. Your feelings, this is, this is, this is kind of hard, your feelings carry absolutely no merit with God. Emotion is never a criteria for spiritual life. It may be legitimate, you may legitimately feel bad about it, it may be a grateful response to God for His wonderful provision, but emotion has no value in God's forgiveness. That only value there is the work Christ did on the cross, and you are agreeing that you committed a sin. It does not hurt to mentally challenge yourself to try to not repeat that sin, but that's not required either. The non-meritorious act of naming your sin to God is what He requires. He is faithful and righteous to forgive them those sins based on the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's quite a wonderful provision. It may be even more wonderful than you realize at the beginning. 1 John 1 9 says more than just confess and be forgiven. It also says and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So, the provision is that if we confess, name, the sins that we remember committing, He will forgive us of those and also forgive us of sins that we have committed and we forgot about. And we don't confess because we've forgotten them. That's not all. 
He will also forgive us of the sins we have committed that we did not even know our sins and still are not aware our sins. He will forgive us of those also if we forgive, confess the sin that we know we committed. So, cleanse us of all unrighteousness means exactly that. So now you are in fellowship. You've, con you've confessed all known sin to the Lord. You're in fellowship with the Holy Spirit who has permanently indwelt you. He is willing to teach you teach your human spirit, Bible doctrine, and promote you to spiritual maturity at this point. But, as soon as you commit another sin, he stops. You are out of fellowship. And the Bible refers to that as being carnal. You are out of fellowship, and you are unable to do anything that glorifies God when you're out of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The answer, keep short accounts. Never wait very long to go to the Lord in prayer and silently confess sin. Just a little side note here that we fall into. Never confess a sin again unless you commit that sin again. If you haven't committed it again and you bring it up to the Lord in prayer in confession again, what you're really doing is saying, I don't really believe that you forgave me the first time. I don't believe your promise. So don't do that. That in itself is another sin. So if you have already confessed that sin and you haven't done it again, don't confess it again. Thank you very much. If you have any question about forgiveness or about confession, Contact us at, the, at this uh, channel and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. There's a lighthouse on a hillside That overlooks life's sea And when I'm tossed about It sends out a light That